tutorial, we're going to learn to take a picture of a granite slab and use it as a texture to texture these tops in this kitchen design. First thing you're going to want to do is find a picture of a granite slab. You can take it yourself from your favorite digital camera or even go onto Google Image Search and there's plenty of pictures of granite slabs available there. One thing you're going to want to note, whether downloading or taking a picture, Make sure that it doesn't have any reflections or other obstructions in front of it and that it's nice and clear and as close to a straight on shot as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect though, that's the beauty of what we're about to do. Another thing to note is the size of the image is important. You're going to want it as small as possible to still have it look good. Uh, images that are excessively large uh, will bog down SketchUp and your computer if you have uh, too many of them in your design and nothing's worse than doing a presentation in SketchUp uh, of a kitchen design and having your computer not go fast. So when you find your texture, save it on your computer, load up your kitchen drawing, and first thing I like to do is to make a rectangle somewhere in the design about the size, we're going to make it a little bit bigger than this island top here. We're going to click on our paint bucket tool, we're going to scroll up to in model so we can see all the textures that we have in the model and we're going to hit the plus here to create a new texture so instead of selecting colors we're actually going to go to the texture image area and click open and I've already downloaded a picture of a soapstone slab so I'll load that in and there you can see it's a it's a shot almost straight on, bit of an angle, and we've got the, uh, the grapple in the way, so we're going to have to deal with that in a little bit. We know that this island is about four feet in this direction, so I'm going to type in 48 inches here just to get the image close to the right size. You don't have to be accurate on this, just your best guess. Now you can see the image is in my in-model textures list. So I'm going to click on it, go into my model, and paint it on this surface. Now, this is obviously not what we want. So if I right click on this face or this texture, go down to the menu that says texture, and click position. Now I can take the hand tool, move the image around like this, and you'll notice that there's four tacks on the corner of the image. You may see there are four tacks like this, or four tacks like this. And you can move back and forth in between these two tacks by right clicking and checking or unchecking fixed pins. If you have the tacks that look like this, these allow you to stretch and skew the image in, in various directions and even rotate it if you'd like. But our image is pretty close to rotate it the right direction, so we're actually going to right click and uncheck fixed pins and we're going to get these four thumbtacks. And basically what's going to happen now, if I click and release on these thumbtacks, I'm going to move them over to the corners of this granite. And you don't have to be perfect on this the first time around. You can always do this over and over again and fine tune it as you get closer. Now, notice I'm putting this pin below this grapple here because we don't want that on our countertop. Move this pin down here and click again to tack it back in place. Now, think of this image as sort of a, a piece of rubber that we're going to stretch over this rectangle that we drew earlier. If I click and hold on one of these pins and drag it towards the corner, you'll see that the image starts to stretch as I do that. So again, I'll click and hold on this tack, drag this corner down here, click and hold again, snap it into this corner, and the same thing here. Now, this looks pretty good. I got it on the first try. You can always pick the pins up, move them, and, and continue doing this. If you get your, uh, your image real jumbled, you can always right click and push reset, start over. You can also take the hand tool and move this texture around if you want to you know, get the veining just so. When you get everything just right, right click on the texture and click done. 
now you'll see we have that texture looks pretty good on there now we're going to want to put this texture on the rest of our countertops I have these countertops grouped so if we go into the group and we click the paint bucket this is a common mistake people make when trying to apply these stretched textures to other surfaces you see I've got the soapstone texture in here if I click on that click on this countertop we're gonna have to start all over again we don't want to do that so let's undo and I'm going to show you a new feature that is unique to SketchUp 7 so right now you see we only have one soapstone texture in here if I click back over to this texture that we've stretched and put in place right click and click make unique texture if you look up in the materials window now we have a new soapstone texture in our model and what it is is a, a copy of the original texture but it's already stretched and rotated the way that we want so now if I go back into this group and I get the surface click on this newly created texture that we created from clicking make unique texture and paint it on there and there you have it I didn't have to do all that stretching and rotating work all over again same thing if I go to these other countertops click our newly created texture and there you go and since I have these countertops in groups if I put that one texture on there we can do our edges and now we've got a great looking granite textured kitchen